Hi everyone, and welcome to this presentation about property graphs. This new feature of the upcoming 23C release supports the latest SQL 2023 standard, which introduces SQL extensions to support graphs. Oracle Database 23C is actually the first commercial database to implement this new syntax known as SQL slash PGQ. I'm Francois Pons, I report to Database Product Management, and I'm very happy to introduce you to this exciting new feature. This is the usual safe harbor statement, just to remind you that this is for your information only and should not be considered legally binding. Here is our agenda. First, we'll explain what property graphs are. Then we'll review a business example that will make things uh, hopefully more clear. We'll then uh, examine how we can query a graph with this new SQL slash PGQ syntax. And we'll also discuss the data mining analytics algorithms that we can run against uh, such a graph. We will also discuss what is Graph Studio, which is a specific part in autonomous database dedicated to the handling of uh, such graphs. So what are property graphs? We are all very familiar, I believe, with a relational data model where data is stored efficiently in tables of rows and columns with few to no redundancies when schemas are normalized. And here is a very basic example where we have one table of multiple lines and two columns. It makes storing and retrieving data very easy, but it does not highlight connections between entities that may be buried within the data. For instance, in this occurrence, it's not obvious whether A is connected to I. However, if we were to represent the same data in a graph, that would really help to answer the question. It even becomes quite easy and obvious, and we can ask other questions about connections, like which nodes are directly connected to node I, or even which nodes are indirectly connected to node I through multiple hops, or even what's the shortest path between node A and node I, that sort of thing. So a property graph is a way to represent and also analyze data in visual form. It's not just a collection of data points, it's a, a visual representation that helps to understand connections better. The nodes are the vertices of the graph and the connections are the edges. These graphs then offer a different view of your data. And the good news is that we can build such a model on top of a relational data model. We could probably say that graphs are everywhere or could be everywhere. Many relationships between entities can be represented as graphs. For example, in a basic bank ledger example, like on that slide, where money is transferred between accounts, we could represent accounts as nodes and transfers as edges. These vertices and edges, as you can see on the right hand side, can have additional and multiple properties attached to them as key value pairs. There are three things that property graphs can do for us. First of all, model our data based on relationships in a natural, intuitive, and visual way. Second, discover hidden connections and patterns. And third, analyze connections by means of embedded graph algorithms. Let's look at a business example to make things uh, even more clear. This uh, basic financial example has two tables, a bank accounts table and a table of cash transactions, which is named uh, bank transactions. 
it's um, handling money transfers between the accounts. This is the data in our tables. And it's important to realize that you can build a graph model like we are going to do it here on top of a relational data model. Here, bank accounts are the entities that naturally become vertices in the graph. And when we transfer money between two accounts with one row in the bank transfers table, that is a relationship that is modeled as an edge. Here is another example. So we have accounts established as nodes or vertices and money transfers which are set up as edges. In general, entities which are uniquely identified by a primary key tend to become vertices in a graph. And tables with foreign keys to entities they can be represented as edges. Both nodes and edges have attributes. For example, nodes have the balance attribute, or property if you will, and edges have the amount of transfer and transaction date as properties or attributes. And you pick the attributes of interest from within your node and edge tables as you build your property graph. No need to take everything, just like you would when building a view on top of tables. So once again, a property graph can be built as a view on relational tables. And for this, we have the new syntax that is brought by SQL slash PGQ. We see this uh, create property graph new statement that allows to give the graph a name and then to uh, tell which tables should be considered uh, providing vertices. Here, bank accounts has many rows. Each row becomes a vertex in the graph. We also specify bank transfers as an edge table, meaning that each row in bank transfers becomes an edge in the graph. And we pick some columns of interest to become properties of either the vertices or the edges. We can see that the edge tables uh, usually have source keys and destination keys because they materialize a link or a connection between two entities or vertices of the graph. And so you usually uh, find uh, columns with foreign key referencing a um, unique identifier in a ver vertex. So what are the business uh, applications or the business questions that can be solved by looking at your data as a graph. Well, for example, in financial applications interested in fraud detection, we can use graph to detect suspicious patterns like cycles where money goes back to the same account. Or we can track ways to transfer money between accounts through multiple intermediates, perhaps to hide the transaction or to cross a limitation on the maximum allowed amount. And we can be very interested in identifying which accounts does a lot of money flow through. In manufacturing, we can track dependencies between parts of a component or a system. And by looking at a graph, we can um, measure what is the impact of changing the design of a part to other parts. And once again, in financial applications uh, with uh, money transferred between accounts, we could have a graph like this one. And in that case, um, uh, we could be very much interested in uh, questions such as, uh, are there cycles starting with account ID 259? Or 
are there certain paths between account ID 681 and 228? Or what are the least connected accounts? Or on the contrary, what are the highly connected accounts? Because visually, you can see that some accounts are more connected than others. And these are the insights that you can find with graph queries and graph algorithms. So in 23C, you can create a property graph as a view over data in a relational model, and there is no need to copy data anywhere else. Defining a property graph only creates metadata like a view. Data remains in place while being queried as a graph. And so you can execute, insert, update, delete, and they are instantly available in the graph. This is very well suited for operational workloads where many transactions are executed, but you can still query your graph and it's immediately reflecting this ch these changes. So, Querying the graph is quite interesting. How do we do that? There is a new syntax in SQL slash PGQ for that purpose. SQL slash PGQ mainly introduces a graph table operator that can be used as a table expression in a from clause. It takes a graph as input against which it matches a specified graph pattern that you can see here highlighted in yellow. There are a number of conventions in these uh, expressions. You see that round brackets represent vertices. You can use variables like src for such a vertex. Then we use uh, square brackets indicating edges and some hyphens or arrows to materialize the pattern. Or the path. If uh, you look at the expression at the bottom of that slide, you can also notice that we are using curly brackets to indicate the number of hops. In this case, to link a certain source with a certain destination. And we are interested in uh, finding here between one and three hops to link source to destination. Here is um, still another example where here we are trying to detect cycles in a financial application um, that would be quite interesting to find out and it would probably be very difficult to express without the new syntax. Here we query all accounts having five hop transfers that start and end with the same account. You see we are using the same variable src to represent such a vertex where money goes back to it. And uh, even more than that, we order the results by the number of such cycles. So that is easy to express that way, but if we were to express that with a select statement over relational tables, it would take a lot of joints and union statements it would be very complex and hard to read. So it's very nice to support graphs and to be able to query them. I have to explain that perhaps supporting graphs is not quite new in 23C. In fact, Oracle Database introduced support for graphs as early as 12C. However, in the 12C time frame, and what I'm going to say here applies also to 18C and 19C, the SQL standard was still a moving target to support and query graphs. And so Oracle introduced our own version of SQL extensions that we called PGQL. And also we introduced a middleware that is called the graph server that needs to be installed on top of a, let's say, 19C database and through which you have to go if you want to create 
a graph model and query it in PGQL. So you have a strong dependency on this graph server and on this syntax PGQL. What is new in 23C and later is first of all that now there is a SQL standard that is an industry standard which is part of SQL 2023 this famous SQL slash PGQ. Second thing is that we support that in the Oracle kernel. So we have removed the dependency on the graph server. You can now directly connect to a 23C database, let's say by means of a SQL plus, and using SQL slash PGQ syntax, you can create a graph model and query it, like for instance, to find cycles in a financial application. However, the graph server still exists and there are a few things that still need to go through the graph server. These things are the data mining algorithms that you can run over uh, your graph and even in 23C, if you want to run the page ranking algorithm, that still needs to be done through the graph server. This graph server, however, brings some good features like uh, ability to run a complex algorithm with lots of CPU and memory. And it also comes with a number of uh, associated tools, such as uh, this uh, visualization web client which is a single page web application that allows you to directly run a graph query and visualize the result graphically. And this graph has lots of uh, possible customizations. Also, it comes with a number of APIs, I mean the graph server, so that you can connect a Java or a Python application to your model and query it easily. One of the things you want to do is run some data mining analytics on such a graph model. And we have actually implemented over 60 of these parallelized in-memory algorithms that you can run out of the box. They allow you to perform all kinds of ranking, community detection, pathfinding, link prediction and so forth. And so they are very useful in a number of business cases to detect fraud in public safety, sometimes in healthcare, retail or marketing applications. And these algorithms, because of the graph server, uh, additional memory and ability to use several CPUs in parallel can scale extremely well. But as you understand, you need the graph server to run these algorithms. And what they can allow you to do is, for instance, to identify important nodes. Uh, if you consider a social media analysis application, you can identify influencers by finding important nodes. Or you can run a page ranking algorithm, which takes into account not only the number of edges to a certain node to give it an importance, but also the importance of the nodes these edges are coming from. A little bit like Google uh, ranks uh, a page uh, to present it as a result to your query. We can also identify clusters in a graph through uh, running these algorithms. Clusters are nodes that are more connected to each other than to other nodes. And that's interesting to detect communities we can also find bridges between these clusters and we can identify the shortest path between two vertices. And for instance, in manufacturing applications, it can show how parts are connected to each other. So many applications to running these graph algorithms thanks to the graph server. So what about this graph server? It's some kind of middleware that can be deployed different ways. The first way is to deploy it in standalone mode, 
if you are doing that on Linux, it's just uh, an RPM to execute, plus a few configuration settings to decide on, uh, like a connection string to the database. If you are a WebLogic server user, you can just uh, add the graph server to WebLogic server, or even to Apache Tomcat. So it can be deployed as a middleware in different modes. It comes with Java and Python APIs, and those APIs allow you to load uh, and let's say consume a graph into the graph server and then run some analytics in memory and in parallel. On the autonomous database, it's even simpler because this is the exception where you never have to install any additional piece of middleware like this graph server because everything is integrated within the autonomous database framework. So the autonomous database provides you with um, Graph Studio, which is, uh, um, let's say, uh, a GUI that is part uh, of the system and that adds an integrated service with a powerful user interface for developing applications that use graph analysis. From, from this Graph Studio, you can create your model. Uh, you have a wizard, for instance, that helps you uh, identify tables that should become vertices and tables that should become edges. And once you have validated uh, your graph model, you can use notebooks to create paragraphs of queries with their visualizations. These notebooks uh, are, um, in fact, uh, little web pages, uh, uh, interactive web applications, if you will, for querying, visualizing, and even sharing um, an analysis. And also from these notebooks and from Graph Studio as a whole, you can run the algorithms. And there is no additional piece of software to configure or install. You just have a button to click once a graph has been modeled to load it in memory and to uh, run uh, such an algorithm. You access to this Graph Studio simply from database actions. So if you are used to working on an autonomous database, you know that we have this uh, collection of tools called database actions and as part of database actions there is graph studio which gets its own user interface where you can define graphs and create notebooks and clone notebooks and each notebook um, is a collection of little paragraphs where you can create queries run the query and visualize the result uh, and save the, the result uh, of this analysis to be shared between, uh, between uh, uh, people in a group. In summary, Oracle Database 23 adds comprehensive support for graph queries and analytics, and that's a free feature available in all database editions. All that support is uh, provided on top of the robustness, scalability, high availability, security of the Oracle database. And Graph Studio makes it even simpler by providing this Graph Studio uh, workshop within the framework of services. If you want to uh, become more familiar with uh, these new features, there are already a couple of Live Labs workshops free to use at your own pace to learn more about Oracle Graphs. Especially the first one of that list is really focusing on the new syntax that is brought by 23C, the SQL slash PGQ, allowing you to, to create a graph model and to query it directly against 23C. There are here important links, first of all, to download the Oracle database free version. Uh, as you know, Oracle database 23C, which is our next long-term release with extended support until 2031 at least, um, 
hasn't yet been generally available. However, there is an early version, which is called Oracle Database 23C free developer release, and this is based on the beta code. It's already available, it is free, you can download and use it, and it contains all the graph features that I have described. Also, the full documentation is already available, and then you can experiment with these new features. Thanks for attending, and I hope you will have a lot of fun using Oracle Graph.